going on guys? I'll go back to Max Boneyard Builds. As you can see the uh, garage is empty. We got all the generations lined up behind me. That's always kind of cool. Uh, got a temporary project. Gonna be jumping in there. I'm sure I'll uh, shoot some video on that. But, uh, oh boy, that's bright. The uh, reason today that the hood's up on the white one is because the water pump, she'd been weeping for a little while. Every time I stop it, I'd be getting about a baseball size uh, puddle of antifreeze. I knew it was coming. Well, the other day, drove it for a few minutes, came home, came back out about an hour later, and boy, did I have a puddle. So it finally went out completely. Uh, water pump changing on these LSs. Let me get you turned around. It's super easy. I'm not going to bore you guys talking the whole time. I'm just going to shoot a quick video and uh, a little time lapse, everything all edited in there together. It's real easy. There's a couple other uh, videos out on YouTube. Watch those if you got any questions. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to switch one of these water pumps out on your LS style motors. jumping in here uh, all we're gonna do we're gonna get this air intake out of the way you only need a handful of bolts to get one of these water pumps off Let's see if I can get you down in here out of the Sun uh, you got some 10 mils I think you got uh, three on this side and two or three on this side underneath this alternator and power steering bracket you're going to have to get your belt out of the way. It's a 15 mil that can grab onto your belt tensioner here. Uh, you've also got some 15 mils. I think you got three of them that hold that belt tensioner on. That'll have to get taken off and switched over to your new water pump. Uh, got a few hose clamps. You got your lower and your upper. Get those out of the way. Uh, the Air conditioning belt, I do suggest taking that off since you're going to go ahead and since you're going to be in here because you are going to have some coolant loss. If that thing gets soaked in coolant and then you put it back on there and then you're going to have a squealing belt or something. So I do suggest taking that off. It only takes a minute. Uh, you got your lower belt tensioner down here for your air conditioner belt. All you got to do, rock that to the side, pull that belt off, throw it off to the side, and then you don't have to worry about getting it soaked in coolant and having a squealing belt later but it's really that easy uh, clean up your gasket surface once you get your old one off get your new one on uh, I'll have you guys along for the ride if anything I uh, think's important along the way I will let you guys know but it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward process and uh, we'll get it switched out we're also going to switch out the uh, thermostat as well uh, O'Reilly, I think, is where I picked mine up at. It was like 135 bucks. It actually came with a new thermostat and housing with it. Since you go ahead and get that changed out as well, not a bad idea since you're already getting everything off. Go ahead and change that thermostat and everything out while you're at it. Uh, pretty simple process. And uh, 10 mil, 15 mil, uh, flathead screwdriver, uh, ratchet to move over. Uh, your belt tensioner it's it's a pretty straightforward process and once you get your belt off and stuff remember there is a serpentine belt guide well it used to be on here or over here but if uh if you don't have one just take a picture of it so that way you know which way that serpentine belt is supposed to go never been off of there. Yeah. All 
right, man, that thing was stuck on there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get this belt out of the way. And then your lower belt, hopefully you can see it down there, right here, I'm just going to grab on to this belt tensioner that's right down there, give it a tug to the side, get that belt off as well. So the last thing you want is a squealing air conditioner belt due to being soaked and cooled. only takes a second to get that off. Now grab your 15s, go ahead get this belt tensioner off as well. And you've got one on the back side down here. All right, get yourself a set of pliers. Let's go ahead and get rid of these top hoses, get those out of the way. Remember to try and have some of uh, your flea market find cake pans and uh, roasting pans and whatever you can to catch some of that coolant that's going to be coming out because it is going to make a little bit of a mess. Sometimes this hose kind of gets sealed on there. So you gotta keep going around it, lightly pull on it, you know, twist it. I've seen some guys use picks, different things. But you just gotta break that little bit of a seal that it's created. Whew, and it finally comes off. Like so. Alright, we're gonna let that drain for a while. Alright, now you got your upper hose out of the way. Let's go ahead and get, you've got your uh, heater hoses here and also your lower rad hose here and we're going to get those moved out of the way.
and same with those sometimes they get stuck you got to work them with a screwdriver to kind of break that seal There it went finally. Holy cow. All right. All right, now we got that one out of the way. Let's get this other one out of the way. Said get her tucked up there to a higher point. Try and keep as much coolant in your radiator as you can. All right. Now, you just got your 10 mils, one, two, and I think you got a third one, yep, tucked in right there. And then on this side, you got one and two. And of course, the neighbors getting something delivered so bear with me on all that noise. Holy cow, maybe more than a little bit. And of course my phone's ringing. Oh, come on, you can do it. Am I missing a bolt? Well. No wonder, I'm missing a bolt. There's three on this side. Don't forget the one on the bottom, like I just did. No wonder it wouldn't come off. I was gonna say, holy cow. 
Seriously. It's always the 10 millimeter. Always. So, three to a side. Ooh. Let me try and catch it more of coolant. That's gonna come out of the block here. And there we go. There's your water pump. You can see, I think those gaskets is what actually failed on mine. Because some of these bolts, you can see on that passenger, or correct me, driver's side, compared to those here, those are pretty dirtied up. I think that's where coolant and that was getting past that gasket and making a mess out of things. Luckily, the bolt themselves are still good. They just had coolant going over them and stuff, so I'll be able to clean them up and still reuse them. Okay, make sure on here that you get your gaskets off. Like right now, don't think that that's the block. There's actually a gasket surface on there that you need to make sure that you get off right there. And you've got one on the other side as well. Yep. See, right there. That's where the gasket was messed up. And that's actually where I was getting my oil leak from was that gasket. Right there. Make sure you get in here. Wipe everything off. Make sure that your maiden surface is nice and clean for those gaskets to go on to. And I'm also going to come back with a razor blade quick just to double check to make sure everything's nice and clean. So get your nice clean razor blade. What you're going to do is just run that across the block. As you see some of that that's getting pulled off of there you want to make sure all that's gone. Before you try and put your new gasket on just to make sure it's a nice clean surface all right whenever you get your new one take a look make sure the orientation and everything looks correct which this does Next thing, to make sure that these gaskets stay in place, uh, if they come with two different ones, if they come with these metal ones, or if they come with paper ones, throw the paper ones away. Make sure and use the metal ones, because those are the ones that GM intended. Uh, easy way to do this to make sure that they stay in place. These are, these are the same both ways there's no it, if you look at them there's no front there's no back they're both designed the same they've got a curled edge on both sides so everything's exactly the same uh, what you're going to do is take your water pump bolts slide them back in here slide them into your bolt holes here and once you get all three of your bolts lined up 
that will align those gaskets where they need to go. Like so. And like so. So that will hold these gaskets. If you look on the back side, it'll hold these gaskets where they need to go whenever you put this water pump back on. So now, slowly and easily, take your time putting this back where it's supposed to go, lining up all your bolts. Take a peek back there, make sure they're all lined up. Make sure they're all st starting. Boop. Once you get a few of these going, you'll be able to let go of the pump and it'll hold itself up there. Like that. All right, now that we have all of them hand tight, we're gonna go around, we're gonna do 11 foot-pounds on each one. These don't take a whole lot of torque. Then we'll bump it up to 22. Okay, now that we've got the water pump installed, I double checked, everything's torqued down to 22 foot-pounds on the water pump bolts. Let's get the new thermostat put in. You can see that these LS's have this little bypass here, and this is your new gasket. There's no gasket surface here. This acts as your gasket for the water pump. There's going to be a little uh, 
nodule, little tit, little whatever you want to call it. Just make sure it lines up on your water pump here. Make sure it kind of fits snug into place and use the new bolts supplied with the new housing. Get your torque wrench back out and those are back down to 11 foot-pounds. All right, now we've got the water pump on. We've got it secured down with the uh, six bolts. We've got the new thermostat on. Now let's start connecting our hoses back on. Every time you put a hose back on, Make sure you give it a tug and a double check to make sure it's not going anywhere. Now, if you'll notice, whenever your tensioner goes back on here like it should, make sure to put your small bolt at the bottom. Now that you got these tightened up, uh, double check them with a torque wrench to 37 foot pounds. Now, just do it in reverse order. Get that AC belt on your ribs, on your compressor, and on your crank pulley. Make sure it's on the second set.
Now again, reverse order with your belt. Double check, make sure it's seated in the middle of everything, seated on the crank, seated on the tensioner, all the way around. So there it is guys, water pump replacement. Took me about uh, an hour and 45 minutes and that was with obviously filming, trying to make sure I got the right shot. And of course I forgot the lower water pump bolt on the driver's side. Don't be like this guy. Take your time, it's three on each side, not two on one side. Anyways, GM designed this motor uh, great. Super easy to get to, takes a little bit of time I mean, getting the hoses off took more time than it should have just because they were so seized on it. That was the original water pump with like 140,000 miles. So it, it took a minute to get those babies off of there. Uh, now, before you fire it up, make sure to take that top hose off on the radiator. Hold it way up in the sky. Put the appropriate uh, coolant in there. If, it, if yours has been changed to green or something at some point in time, use the green. Otherwise, if it's factory like mine, use the... Uh, Dex cool. So top that thing off until it starts puking out at you. Then put that hose on, fire it up, start adding coolant to the reservoir until everything cycles through and it gets hot. Uh, man, it's a super easy job. There's a lot more detailed videos out there than mine, you know, because they got camera guys and stuff. I don't have that, so maybe check those out. But anyways, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Max Boneyard Builds. If you haven't uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. Throw me a comment, a like. I don't care which one it is. Throw me one of them. I like to talk to people. I will see you guys next time. Max Boneyard Builds.